All right, we're going to be talking about micro condos today. What is that? Those are condos that are less than 500 square feet. We're going to say, should you be buying them? Should you not be buying them? And how are the banks treating them in today's environment? Let's get into it. We're going to be pulling up today the uh, article that is talking about this. This is in the Toronto Star. You can go look this up. Uh, lenders cautious about micro condo mortgages, but financing options are still plentiful is what they are saying. So micro condos are condos that are really small, under 500 square feet. So uh, this article goes on to mention that Canadians are eager to buy a home as the real estate market cools and might find themselves considering micro condos. Now, what are they? They're very, very tiny. They are normally under 500 square feet. Brokers say many banks' underwriting policies limit how small a condo can be, typically four or 500 square feet. All right, so is this a speed bump? Absolutely, says the guy over at Rate Hub. It might limit your pool of lenders. Yes, sure. So, you know what? We could just go from there, you guys. So everybody wants to get into the real estate market. Everybody always wants a piece to get a piece, right? But you have to take into account that little jump from a 400 maybe to a 550 square unit place. If your bank is saying that under 500 requires all these extra steps for you to get in, possibly that you have to have a larger down payment possibly that you're going to have to pay a higher interest rate because of higher risk to the bank. If you now have to pay a higher down deposit and a higher rate and maybe go through all these extra steps, you might as well just go and buy that 550 square foot one, the one that is just over the limit, you know? And why do the banks not really want to lend you on that? Well, let's go back to the story and hear what they have to say. He says, it doesn't mean that you're out of options. Lenders are cautious about small condos because of marketability. If lenders have to take ownership of the condo because of the borrower is defaulting on their mortgage, they, re they reason smaller properties could be less attractive to prospective buyers. And you are correct. Once you go into a really, really small unit, it's very few people are willing to live in that. So yes, students are willing to move into those really, really tiny units, but they're not really willing for a couple to move into it. It's not very easily for somebody with a kid to move in it, even a pet, because it's so tiny. Because that resale isn't really there as strongly, then there tends to be a lot of people that don't want it. The banks don't want to deal with a very unique property. They want something that is going to be very marketable to everybody. So for me, if I was looking for a unit myself, I would talk to my lender, talk to my mortgage broker. Hopefully your mortgage broker has many different lenders that you're dealing with. And if you can talk to all of them, get his input. If he's telling you that you have to put more money down and pay a higher rate and it take longer, you might want to consider maybe borrowing an extra 10,000 from your mom and dad and stuff just so that you can get into one that is just over the limit so that it can get through really, really easily. Remember, under $500,000 in Canada, you only have to put 5% down if you're moving into it yourself. So that's only $25,000, and then you can uh, move into the property. So it really depends what kind of job you are. A lot of people are going to be telling me, David, but you should put 20% down because of uh, this CMHC. You're going to have to pay the... Um, extra fee on on the mortgage the mortgage insurance so will you will is that good or bad so if you now have to save up an extra seventy five thousand dollars it's going to take you another 10 years to do so the property value will have increased a lot more than that in that meantime right so there's an opportunity cost that you have to weigh for me i would be taking that five percent deal all day long because i would know what path that i'm on so I'm curious about you. Do you own a, a small condo? Was it easy for you to get mortgages on it? Uh, could you get multiple lending? Was there competition for it? Do you like living in a small condo? Because most of the time, the people we run across, we don't see them very much that actually like it. They can't wait to get out of it. Anyway, I'm curious to know what you guys think. If you know anyone that this could help, please send it to one person. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this, and hit that notification bell. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.